All right, seventh grade science classes. Uh, this year, we've got a, a lot of difficult topics that we're working through. And one of those is the cell theory. The cell theory for us is really hard to memorize. So every year, we usually try to take our concepts and make them look a little bit more interesting, try to find clever ways to, to bring these things back to our mind. So a couple years ago when we were going through this, I thought, well, let's try to make this into a, a comic strip and try to use the different parts of the cell theory and turn them into a picture that then I could actually remember. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a single sheet of paper. So you should have gotten one from Mrs. Reynolds or I. Either a regular sheet of printer paper, just in case you lose yours, you could just grab some from home. Or there's a, a little bit larger one if, if you really like to draw. But in doing that, you have a rubric that we're going to hand you. It's a, a little green sheet of paper here, and it has each individual section for each part of the cell theory. There are six cell theory statements. For each one, you're going to notice that there's four separate things that we've got to do for each one, which is put a label, which you can see up here says cell theory one, to color it, to have a caption where the cells say something, and then to write the cell theory statement on the back of the paper right behind that box. So let's take the first one for an example. The first part of the cell theory says that every living thing is made of at least one cell. Now, mine's not very clever or very funny, but you can come up with something maybe for a caption that would be more interesting. Mine has a single cell in the caption for it says, I'm a cell. If you're alive, I'm in you. I am you. So the concept there is if something is living or it was at any point, it would always have at least one cell in it. So I have my caption. I have a color photo there. There's actually a, a picture in the background. We should have colored backgrounds. So you're going to get points for coloring the cell and for the background. You'll notice when you get the rubric, that's worth two points. So if you only color pieces of it, if it's not entirely colored, you're going to lose points. All right, for cell theory number two, same concept here. Uh, this is that my body and all things function because of cells. So cells are pieces of a much larger organism. So I use that with a muscle cell in a human body, but you don't have to do people for that. You just need to do uh, an organism that has many cells in it. So you could do a plant and you can have something like a, a, a cell inside of a leaf. Uh, sometimes people do people, but they do brain cells, nerve cells, heart cells. Uh, but mine says, I make this part work. Cells make all parts work. So you have a, a muscle here, cell inside of a larger muscle. So cells make tissues and tissues make organs. And that's what that's showing. Now you can see that there's white in this one. What you can't see here is these are all individually lined bricks and it took me a long time to actually do that. So you would not lose points if you're really making use of the empty space. It's okay to have white space as long as I did something with it. Now each one, uh, cell theory number three is that all cells come from pre-existing cells. So you have one, this is mitosis here, or asexual reproduction. This is, both of them say, hello me. That's because they're identical to each other. But the, this part of the cell theory says that they came from each other. Okay, so I don't actually need to uh, show the full picture of mitosis, but you could. And again, you can be clever with that. Mine's not very funny or, or clever. But this is, they were one cell and now they're turning into two, just like our picture for mitosis. And when we get down to cell theory number four, this one's difficult to understand. This means that all cells have some things in common with each other. So if I look at this picture, this is actually a plant cell. This is something called a protist. That's the, the hairy peanut in my class. That's the paramecium. 
And then this may be just like an animal cell. That could be one of our cheek cells. Uh, the idea there is that they all have the same types of organelles. In your ribbon of life example, they all, every cell, no matter what type it was, bacteria, whether it was in a plant, whether it's in your dog, or whether it's in a worm, they all have ribosomes, they all have cytoplasm, and they all have a cell membrane. So they have these things in common. It says we have a lot in common. Even though they're in totally different types of organisms, they're similar in their internal structure. Outwardly, they look different from each other. So that's cell theory four. Again, you're noticing these all have color backgrounds and the cells are colored. Down here, cell theory number five says that they all pass on identical hereditary material, so the same DNA. Every cell in your body is a twin. So you originally started as one cell inside of your mom's body, inside a person, and that same DNA that you had on that day that no other organism had ever had before has been duplicated trillions and trillions of times in your body. So every cell in your body, even if they look a little di bit different, their DNA is the same. So this says we're twins. It has little chromosomes on their shirts. And again, we have a background. And then the last one was that every single cell has, it takes care of all like characteristics of life. So I put, I'm a busy cell here. And then if you could see it up close, it has each of the eight characteristics of life around it. Again, you don't need to have the same thing as me, and I really don't want you to. I've seen a lot of brick walls and checkered floors over the years. You just need to have interesting backgrounds. They need to be fully colored. So again, where do my points come from? Number one, I put a label. Six points out of 30 just for saying Cell theory one, two, three, four, five, and six. Second thing, color. It needs to be fully colored. The backgrounds and the cells all colored in every one of these. And if it wasn't, like the white clouds over there, or the white text boxes, the bricks up here, you know, it's still used space. The caption, I have to have the cells say something that should help me remember each cell theory statement. And then the theory, again, I get six points actually just for writing on the back of this paper the cell theory statements behind each one of those. Now, obviously, if you have questions, you can ask that, but it really is all still on the rubric. If you look down here, it even tells us what types of things go in the cut. How are we grading your coloring, the caption, and the theory? If you would read this, you know, that would help quite a bit too. And then this example and perhaps some other examples are up on Mrs. Reynolds' Canvas page and mine. So I hope that helps a little bit. Again, if you have other questions, you can go ahead and ask them. But please, you know, you can also re-watch this video and that will work as well. All right. Thanks for getting all your station work done. And hopefully this will help you as you finish this as well. Have a good day.